Hey everybody, Brian Garcia, meteorologist, National Weather Service, San Francisco Bay Area, Monterey Bay regions. Congratulations, we've done it. We've gotten through another summer and now it's time to look forward into fall and winter. So let's take a look at the winter outlook. So grab your pumpkin spice, whatever you got, maybe a cup of hot cocoa and let's get right to it because we've got a lot to cover. This is the outline that we're going to go through. So we've got a lot going on here. So let's rip right on through it. Last winter, in order to look forward, we always like to look backwards. Last winter, technically, we were in a southern oscillation neutral phase, but it definitely acted like a La Nina, which was really weird. And what I mean by that, it was just kind of a tale of two halves. Then the half was really divided up I-80 here. So north of I-80 was, um, well, 100% of average annual precipitation or more. And south of I-80 was, well, sub of 100% percent of average annual precipitation so dry to the south wetter to the north definitely felt like la nina last year for sure over here on the right this is a picture of some flooding that happened last winter up in sonoma county with the russian river so if we look at the drought status the drought monitor drought monitor uh, that's put out well every thursday it comes out and you can see the agencies that get together and do this but anyhow all that uh whitish area that's just none in terms of intensity for drought and you got to remember this is like meteorological agricultural type drought assessment it doesn't have anything to do with declaring a drought that's really done at the state county local and water agency levels they all get together and talk about whether or not to declare a drought over here on the right is what this map looked like about a year ago we were just abnormally dry a year ago. This year, we're none, so that's great. If we look at the US seasonal drought outlook, and this was released September 30th, and is valid from October 1st through December 31st, so it takes us through the rest of the year in terms of forecast. Uh, it's a big fat nothing burger. And down here, looking in the bottom right, no drought. So that's a good sign of things to come. So I talked about a little bit about Southern Oscillation in that first graphic I showed you. Here's what I'm talking about, a little more detail when I talk Southern Oscillations. We have El Nino conditions, we have La Nina conditions, and we have normal conditions. This is really all based off of the strength of the trade winds. When we have strong trade winds across the equatorial Pacific here, over here on the right, it shoves all the sea surface temperatures towards the warm sea surface temperatures towards the western part of the equatorial Pacific. Can't have a void of water there across South America, so you get this cool subsurface water upwelling along the coast there. That's when we get into La Nina conditions. It creates abnormally cool water across this region. Go over to El Nino, it's quite the opposite. The trade winds just, ah, well, either non-existent or flip the other way. And it brings warm sea surface temperatures shoving off to the east and it cuts off any of that upwelling. So you get uh, abnorm abno abnormally warm sea surface temperatures across uh, South America, the coast of South America, and going up into Central America as well. Normal conditions, someplace in between, and everything's happy there. One of the things that you gotta remember here though are the ocean and the atmosphere can and do couple. And so you can see those thunderstorms above the warm areas of water. That convection plays a big role in terms of north and southward movement of uh, tropical and subtropical moisture. So we'll talk a little bit about, little bit more about that in a few slides here. Let's finish the Southern Oscillation stuff though. Here is an anomaly map of sea surface temperatures. So remember, we're talking about the equatorial Pacific across here, and we see a lot of blue in here. And that blue means that it's colder than normal. This is just a single day snapshot, but I've been watching it for several weeks now, and that has just been deepening in the cooler than normal temperatures. And once we drop below zero, minus 0 0.5 degrees C in the anomalies, that's when we start looking for La Nina conditions to develop. And when La Nina conditions do develop, it typically sends the, the weather pattern up and over the top of us. So we have a cooler and wetter northwest and drier southwest, and the Bay Area and Central Coast sit somewhere right in between. So any wobbles can get us wetter or leave us drier. So when we look at the forecast for the Southern Oscillation, remember I said anything below minus 0 0.5 degrees C anomaly puts us in La Nina. This was the observation from the seasonal time frame of June, July, August. So when we see JJA, that's June, July, August, or DFJ is December, January, February, for example. And then you see that black line slope down to that gray square. That's the August observation. So it's cooling off. 
and then we see the models run this out and it looks like the vast majority it looks like the majority of the models I shouldn't say vast looks like the majority of the models stay in or go into la nina conditions for a time here and then things start to turn back up into neutral conditions by the time we get out to january february march february march april march april may somewhere in there we start to transition into uh, neutral conditions so this is going to be something to watch because when we're in those weak La Nina conditions, when we're just below that minus 0.5 degrees C, this is the precipitation pattern that's occurred in each of the weak La Nina conditions since we've been recording this type of stuff. So going back into the 50s. And if you look at those maps, brown is dry, green is wet. There aren't a lot of green maps. So uh, let's take a look at this one here now. You can see that the dry years dominate in weak La Nina conditions. And there can be wet years, but there aren't as many as there are dry years, and there can be normal years as well. So that bigger slice of the pie is on the dry years, and especially as you go farther south into Southern California, it gets very dry here in the central part of California and uh, Northern California. Um, we can still get wet years and some near normal years. Like I mentioned, there are other things at play when we talk about the Southern Oscillation. So it's not just the Southern Oscillation moving those thunderstorms around, but we got to tap into that moisture somehow. And that moisture can get tapped into by that graph on the left there with all those different phases. That is the Madden Julian Oscillation and all eight of its phases. The Mount Julian Oscillation plays a big role in, in reaching into some of the moisture, but then we have things like the Arctic Oscillation there on the right, the AO pressure patterns, as you can see there. When we're in a negative phase, we have generally lower pressure sitting off the coast of uh, North America, and so we can tap into some of that moisture. In other words, that we have a trough down there to reach a little bit farther south and pull up some of that moisture. So like when we get the Arctic Oscillation, in phase with um, with the Mount Julian oscillation in a especially an El Nino event, we can get a lot of moisture in towards our area. But even in La Nina events, we can get moisture into our area as well through these phases. And remember, we can't we can and may cross out of weak La Nina into neutral phase southern oscillation at some point in the middle of winter. So it could turn from dry to wet pretty fast. So let's look at some outlooks here. So this is the monthly temperature outlook on the left and the monthly precipitation outlook on the right. We'll look at the monthly initially and then we'll go into seasonal and describe that in a second. So this is for October. When you see above, just think higher probability of being above normal. When you see below, higher probability of being below normal. When you see equal chances, there's just no clear signal to lean one way or another. So it splits the probabilities of above, below, and uh, near normal. Like if you look in Alaska here on the bottom left, you see that near normal. That means you have a higher probability of being near normal. So for the month of October, we have equal chances for temperatures. That means we could get some cooler temperatures. We could just be warm or it could just be near normal. Equal chances for precipitation, but we do see that higher probability of being above normal for precipitation up in the northwest starting to try to sink down into portions of North Bay, really encompassing Northern California, but trying to get into the Bay Area as well. As we go to the seasonal timelines, time this is October, November, December, so three months slammed together. You can see that we have a higher probability of being above normal for temperature. It doesn't mean we won't have cold snaps because we will have cold snaps this winter and cold will be a factor at times this winter. But when averaged out over some of these seasonal time frames, we'll see in likelihood for this time frame at least that we'll see uh, a higher probability of being above normal for temperature. Over on the right, you can see that we have equal chances for precipitation. Again, no clear signal one way or another, but it's a clear La Nina signal. Uh, cooler and wetter northwest, or at least a wetter northwest, and a drier southwest. As we go into November, December, January, there you start to see equal chances creep into the Bay Area for temperature with some higher probabilities of being above normal for temperature. Equal chances continue for precipitation across our area and a clear La Nina signal in that precipitation pattern. Core wet months, December, January, February. Check this out, northwest, below for temperature, uh, nor interior northwest, above for precipitation. That is a clear La Nina signal. And then as we get into our area, you can see that equal chances mainly for our area for temperature and slight higher probability of being above normal for temperature in Central Coast region, especially Monterey County, San Benito. And going over to precipitation, that higher probability of being below normal starts to creep north into the Bay Area. So right now the Climate Prediction Center is painting us with a higher probability of being below normal for precipitation during 
our typical wettest time of the year. January, February, and March, temperature, equal chances. Again, no clear signal one way or another, but I can guarantee you that we will have cold snaps. Um, and then as we get over to precipitation, again, we still have most of our area in a higher probability of being below normal for precipitation. These charts come out on the third Thursday of every month from the Climate Prediction Center. I'm really curious on what they're going to produce for the month of August or October, uh, what they're going to produce in October's chart for these portions of winter. Um, because if we come out of La Nina a little bit on the early side, we could go gangbusters on the precipitation. So it's something we're really going to have to watch. As we get into February, March, you can see now they're starting to pick up a little bit more on, uh, it still has the La Nina signal, but it, it's starting to pick up on a little bit potential for precipitation to make its way farther south. So that signal could be fading at this point as well, that La Nina signal. So equal chances for precipitation, equal chances for temperature as we round out into the spring. It looks like an early warm up as we get into the spring. So higher probability of being above normal for temperature, equal chance of precipitation. But remember by this point in the year, our precipitation averages already start to tank. Other things that we have to watch for this winter, of course, king tides can cause some issues. Uh, this is a picture from the California Coastal Commission out there in Marin County. So when we get those highest of high tides in November, December, January timeframe, we can flood some areas during daytime hours and cause uh, some commute issues and um, transportation issues. Other coastal impacts, other threats, of course, high surf coastal flood, put those on top of king tides and we can uh, flood out roadways this highway one through uh, half moon bay by surfers beach there so it can it can flood out areas uh, that are low-lying right along the coast um, and resources things to watch through the winter so of course weather.gov slash bay area on the left our home page and if you want to forecast, really easy to follow and look at whether or not slash forecast points is a fantastic place to go. Uh, you can just click on any location on the map and it'll give you a quick and dirty forecast. And you can scroll down in this page for a lot more information beneath. Of course, we're on all the socials at NWS Bay Area. I will say Slack is for our internal partners only. And then Blue Sky is a national level account. So our national headquarters deals with that. We don't have one for our office quite yet. No matter what I say about winter in terms of being dry or wet, no matter what anybody says about winter, we could be 10% of average annual precipitation for the water year, which the water year is from October 1st through September 30th. Imagine if we just got 10% of our average annual precipitation, but it all came in like six hours. That could ruin everybody's day. So prepare for the worst event that you can possibly think of, and you'll be prepared for most events that you can possibly go through this winter so preparation is key in order to protect your life protect your family's lives protect uh, your neighbors as well as protecting property or mitigating for property damage that's it winter outlook's done so i'll leave you with this make sure that you take care of yourselves take care of each other and be good to one another see everybody bye